Hi there, Graham Vincent, violin maker and musician. Uh, last video was me um, using thumb planes and various other means to actually thickness the front of the violin. This time I'm going to be cutting the F holes. Uh, I've marked them out and doubtless you will have your own your own um, poster that you're copying or a, a, a real violin. Or you'll have designed your own F holes if you're feeling brave. Uh, I um, spot the material. I uh, this is this is one of my designs. Um, so that's the one that I use. I've marked them out. It's a fairly simple process. I mean, there's a there's a lot of people use a lot of a lot of sort of calculations and so on to work out the positions of the of the actual eyes. Really, the critical ones are, as far as I'm concerned, the critical ones are that the um, the the neck there wants to give you the correct body stop. So that kind of determines really the up and down sort of position of the F holes. And you want um, at absolute minimum the width of the feet of the bridge there and perhaps a little bit more. So uh, those are the sort of critical parameters really. That's not really the subject of this. So I don't have any of those fancy sort of uh, sort of super sharp drill bits and so on for for cutting the the eyes. I just use um, sharp knives. So that's what we're going to do. It's going to be one of my non-stop no editing videos. Hopefully, let me just give me a minute whilst I just check that's more or less in the right place. I think I need to tip it up a little bit, maybe. Something like that. Hopefully we'll be able to see what's going on most of the time here. I think that probably, yeah. Good, let's go for it. So, yeah. F holes. They are a, a real chance for you to sort of show off in your violin making. Um, they need to be they don't want to be woolly, they want to be nice and concise and sharply cut. I normally start by just getting through the front and the fastest way to do that is to cut a hole like this. I find, because I, if you're going to do everything just with a you have just with a knife, you might as well do everything just with a knife. So we're through. And then I'll, whilst I'm in the mood for doing that, I will do the other side. That was the, um, the British violin maker and British Violin Makers Association um, featured maker in the in their quarterly magazine, this last magazine. And one of the questions I was asked is, do you have a favourite tool? And um, I said, yeah, um, there's quite a few that I that I really like, but one that I tend to find myself using a lot at the moment is this. Um, this bridge knife, which is actually, um, I think it's Chinese. It was quite, a, it's quite a cheap one. I think I got it off eBay as far as I remember uh, a few years back. Um, but because it's lovely and thin and because it actually holds the edge really well, it's, um, it's a really, really useful knife. It's lovely. And then I normally cut through here. Um, and this, my normal technique isn't that beautiful, I have to say. It's just, uh, again, cut some holes. Be very careful that you don't put any strain across the, the grain and start a split. And that's the uh, one thing that is really important. I'm sure, you know, it would be faster if I used a drill or something, but I I just like doing things 
by hand if I can, and I certainly can in this instance. I told you this bit wasn't particularly pretty. Dun, 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 dun. We're just kind of hacking our way through the front here um, without causing any chips on the other side, hopefully without any breakout. Like all of these videos, I mean, there's there's so many different ways of skinning a cat, aren't there? I mean, this, this, you know, I'm not saying this is the right way to do it. I'm just saying this is the way I do it. This is a way it can be done. Oh, and the other, the other way I've I've done it before now is literally just pop the knife there and and drill it through. I don't like doing that so much. It's probably a faster and neater way of doing it, but um, I think it probably blunts the knife a little bit more quickly. So I tend not to do that. I'm gonna do all four whilst I'm at it. This front is a gorgeous piece of, um, it's a reclaimed, draw side. Um, it's not spruce, I don't believe. It's a um, it, it's a softwood of some description. I've made quite a few violins out of this. It gives a lovely, mellow, very resonant kind of sound. Um, and this piece is probably, it's been in a piece of furniture for um, probably about 200 years as well. So um, I think it's fair to say it's fairly well seasoned. Really bad. It'd be interesting to see how long this takes, actually. I've not, um, not timed myself doing this before. I honestly don't know how long it takes. So we're all going to learn something, hopefully. Even if all we learn is how long does it take Graham to cut F-holes in his rather peculiar way. Oh, it feels quite, I've left it quite generously thick there. I shall, once I've carved my little concave bit there, I'll probably take a little bit more off the thickness of that area. Um, uh, yeah, I'll just, just shine, I was just shining a light. Um, on this bit to see see through it from the other side just to crumbs tough bit here Nearly there.
Right. Ah, okay, so I'm going to use my little leather strop with a little bit of chrome polish on it, a bit of chrome cleaner, which makes uh, a really good compound for honing edges. There we go. So that will be very sharp now. And what I normally do is I put the knife through from the back and um, away we go. Starting um, to just get closer to the line. Obviously, you have to be, you have to be aware of the grain direction. Um, the grain, obviously, going that way. Therefore, you would want to cut this way, that way, this way on that side, and this way on that side. If that makes sense. So you're not going against the grain anywhere. So you don't want to be doing too much of a wedging kind of action as you go, otherwise you will split the grain. I think I'm on this one, I think I'm just gonna put in a line from the top to, to sort of uh, reduce the, the chances of there being any splits forming. Because the, this is, this has got such an incredibly dense um, sort of uh, annual, the actual annual rings in the in, in the timber. Uh, they're, they're so close together on this bit that there's there's not much give. Um, there's not much give. So I'm a little bit wary about splitting it. But I mean, just for example, here, what have we got? So. Um, Get a ruler, shall we? Let's count one centimeter. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two years in that one centimeter. So that's a that's a slow growing piece of softwood. Incredibly so. I mean, it, it looks a little bit like I'm being a bit hesitant. Um, and the reason for that, I am because I absolutely do not want to introduce any splits at this stage. And also, I don't want to be running over the line. Because yeah, there are ways of getting back if you, if you do cock up in this respect at this point, but it's a lot easier if you don't. <laughs> It's been said um, many times that one of the, the greatest skills in woodworking is um, being able to cover up and rectify your mistakes as you go. I'm sure there's, uh, there's a lot of truth in that. Equally, it'd be nice not to make too many. This sounds like foreshadowing, doesn't it? It sounds like the sort of thing I would say just before I really do something disastrous on this front. Of course, the... If you're watching this video, you'll know that I didn't, because uh, if it was a total, I think the town term is balls up, um, I very much doubt I'll have um, uploaded the video. So perhaps I should be more positive. Oh yeah, I know what I'm doing. Because uh, if you're watching this, <laughs> it, will, it will have gone well. 
It's funny, when I'm concentrating, I do start to utter the most ridiculous drivel. Uh, so you'd be able to judge by just how much I'm concentrating by the intellectual content of what I'm saying. So quite obviously, I'm concentrating quite hard at the moment because I seem to be spouting a load of nonsense. Okay, so I've I've actually scored and taken it through closer to the line than I did last time I did one of these. Um, because I'm a little bit wary, as I say, about the lack of give under the blade on this particular piece of wood. And um, that's just going to make it so much easier. Um, now following, uh, now actually trimming up to the lines. One of the things I really like about this, this knife is it's so, it's so slender, the blade is so slender that you can cut quite deeply without without putting too much effort into it, which is why I'm trying to steer it away from my fingers as well. I have actually stabbed myself with this knife on one occasion. Um, it's best avoided. Yeah, best avoided. There's a fly flying around now. Right, this cut I'm actually going to put on the finished line that I want. As I've said before, there's, you know, this, this isn't me saying this is the way to do it. This is me just saying this is how I do it. Um, obviously, a lot of people saw these with, um, with piercing saws, with coping saws. Um, and then, then just clean up to the line with a knife. Uh, obviously, some people nowadays will just be uh, taking them off the... Uh, off the CNC. I must admit, I do like doing this with a knife. There's something very pure about um, just hand cutting completely like this. This is one job where I Try and resist any temptation to rush. Especially with the video rolling, it's uh, the temptation is to kind of try and make yourself look amazing by doing stuff really quickly and easily and what have you. But um, what I hope I'm getting across here is um, I'm just taking this gently to try and make sure I 
get through to the other end with some F holes that I'm really happy with. Because they are one of the um, one of the defining things about a violin that people do look at, you know, so you want them to be good. Okay, good. Coming on nicely. I'll just open this one up a little bit more and then I'll start cutting through from the back again. Okay. Oh, it's sort of time of year when there are dopey flies just coming out of hibernation. Um, uh, in my workshop, I've got um, I've got insulation in the sea, in the in the rather expansive roof now, which for goodness sake, I've been attacked by flies over here, which I didn't have before. And um, the thing about the insulation is it takes longer for the place to warm up in the spring and for the heat to get through to the um to the flies so they're coming out a little bit later than they normally would and they're also um a bit hungrier and thirstier and more dopey than normal uh, and as i'm sitting here with these lights on this is a nice warm spot they're thinking and they're dive bombing me I don't suppose you really wanted to hear about that, did you? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, this is the moment when I perhaps wish I did have one of those rather fancy round cutters for uh, doing the eyes on these. One of the downsides about doing these videos is you 
Um, you you are conscious of um, holding bits of work in a way that they ap ap appear on the you know in front of the video and the camera and what have you and and you're sort of having to sort of do things sometimes in a slightly different way. Uh, so it just kind of sometimes just makes things a, a tiny bit more awkward. Uh, and I, I must admit, I'm feeling that just at the moment with we're doing this. What with the camera in the way and the dive bombing flies. We're getting there though. Another thing, I know it's really stupid as well, but another thing I really like about doing this with a knife is, um, I mean, obviously people have been cutting F-hole type holes in musical instruments for even longer, but, uh, I mean, the first kind of really identifiable violins with F-holes, you know, violins that look like violins, uh, what, the 1550s? So... Here I am. What's that? Um, 470 years later, doing something that uh, that person all these years ago was, was doing pretty much exactly this. Although he, and it probably was a he, um, for various reasons, he probably wasn't witching on to YouTube there. Probably muttering under his breath. He's probably saying, I hate this new design. Or the equivalent in Italian. Or perhaps he's saying, I love this new design. I expect he was wondering if it was going to catch on. Kind of did, didn't it? Okay, it's looking good.
Well, I know this is taking ages, but um, starting to see an F hole. which is broken off a piece I needed on the inside. Better on the inside than the outside though. If that is the case, and I think it is, I will just uh, glue a little piece on on the inside when the shaping is finished and uh, then, then trim that back afterwards. I don't know if you could hear that fly going past. It sounded like a heavy bomber to me. I'm getting there. I'm actually going to cut against the grain slightly here. I know that it's... No, just let me open it up a little bit first of all. No, I don't have to. That's all right. It'll be okay. Good. Honestly, me, me wittering on, such a load of nonsense I'm talking. I think um, this probably ought to be, uh, perhaps I not ought to knock out the sound for this and just and have like the Benny Hill theme music playing over it or something. Okay, getting there. It's coming up to tea time. Uh, I think Les is doing it tonight, so. I don't put the nicks in at this stage. I um, I leave them until the whole thing is assembled, and I can. It gives me a little bit of wriggle room for the actual um, for, for the stop length. 
the stop length, it, it, it obviously, uh, well, obviously, the stop length is the distance, you know, from there to there. It's called the body stop length. Goodness gracious, the flies everywhere. Hmm. Yeah, I'm working with a sharp knife and I'm being bombarded by flies. It's a little bit, uh, little bit off-putting as I'm trying to pare down to the line. Right, I'm going to move to a, a wider bladed knife for, for this bit. The reason for that being it makes it easier to make a smooth line, a smooth flow of a line. Crying out loud. Another big fly buzzing past. This is uh, how many flies have people spotted during this video? Oh, was yeah, a little little side bet going on. I think we'll count noises, we'll count shadows going over the uh, over the work and big flies seen buzzing past.
Well, we are surrounded by farmland around here, around the village, but uh, it feels more like a scene from um, somewhere in the outback in Australia with the flies everywhere. Right, getting there. I will uh, do the other one up to the same sort of position, up to the same state, then I will the next job is to then carve this little concave area in. Um, sometimes I do that before I've cut the F holes, um, but um, be because it's easier to make a sort of a sharp edge using a knife through the F hole than it is using a gouge. It's, it's easier to define the edge, really, I think that way, but I just fancied doing it this way this time. Okay, I think, like all these things, you sort of, part of this is just how you fancy doing it at the time. I think I'm actually going to, uh, I'm going to take it quite close to the line all the way through, as I did on the other side. It's funny. This is like my 40 something violin. And um, I still haven't completely settled on how to cut F holes. So like I said, this isn't a, this really isn't a do it this way. This is just I hope it's interesting for you guys to see how I'm doing it at the moment. It's kind of, that's what this video is about really, as much as anything. Like I said, what you're, what you're aiming for with F-holes is a nice, crisp, decisive shape with a lovely flow and elegance to it. Shouldn't be woolly, it shouldn't be wobbly. Um, like I said, I'm going to, I'm going to carve this and I'll, 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 I'll leave the actual cleaning up of the F-holes in terms of a, a final sort of carve, I think. Um, probably for tomorrow when I will arrive 
with a fresh set of eyes, I think. Um, I'll get both, today I'll get both of them up to this stage and perhaps if I have a chance, oh, you see that's a bit close to the line there. Let's move away. I mean, that, that line I put in is okay. It will end up there, but I don't, I don't really want to be cutting it directly on the line at this stage, I don't think. I hope you can see this. It'd be funny if I play this video back when I've finished it, only to find that you can't see what on earth I'm doing most of the time. All it'll be is, who knows, maybe an hour or something of Graham complaining about being attacked by flies. I mean, I've, I've been talking about, you know, being careful not, not to split the top and not putting too much effort in, you know, being very careful not to wedge along, you know, split it along the grain and so on. But um, I mean, it, it's worth saying that that is a, that's a very real danger when you're, when you're sawing as well. I can hear a smoke alarm going off. That probably means food's nearly ready, I suspect. Probably something under the grill. <laughs> Very exciting cutting F holes, I think. Uh, it's slightly nerve wracking, um, but it does. It's a major step towards it being a violin, if you know what I mean. Uh, it's, a, it's such a iconic part of the violin, isn't it? You know that uh, when you suddenly got a front with F holes in it, it's like, oh, I'm making a violin. Still find that exciting. Just been buzzed by another fly.
this section I'm working on just here, the grain is kind of almost almost parallel with the surface at that point. So you sort of in a short area, you suddenly find you suddenly find yourself going against the grain unexpectedly. I know you can, you can get away with it to a certain extent if you have a very sharp knife, but nevertheless. Yep, that is one sharp knife. That's the way to do it. What you can't really gauge from this video is how much or how little pressure I'm putting on the knife, obviously, and I'm really not putting much on it. It's just going through this like a hot knife through butter. Um, I know I was saying about the closeness of the of the annual rings and, and like I said that, that seems to be stopping the wood compressing and, and, and getting out the way of the blade a little bit so there's a, a little bit of resistance that way but in terms of actually cutting it's um it's cutting very nicely actually so I'm not looking for any excuses
again, technically I'm sort of going against the grain there a little bit. Well, not technically, I am. <laughs> Just in that bit, but... Uh... I know I seem to be jumping around a little bit with which bits I'm cutting and so on. I just want to, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of doing it in the way that satisfies me whilst I'm doing this. I know it sounds a bit stupid, but it's, um, as I say, I've kind of, there's, I'm not allowing myself to rush on this and if I if I'm if I see a bit over there that I think oh that needs to come off then I just if there's no reason why I shouldn't just stop the bit I'm working on and just do that if that if that if that's what I think it needs. Hmm. Getting there. I have to say, this has taken me longer than normal because I think I'm slightly wary with the camera there. And as I say, because it makes it slightly less natural the way that I can hold it because I know I have to, I have to frame the shot for you. Flies just run into my head. It's most annoying. Do, 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 do. Oh, I've got an annoying French tune rattling around in my head. I sort of, um, I've, um, doing some, uh, playing for a, a, f 
a local French dance. And so I'm learning all these uh, all these French tunes that I don't know. Some of them are quite complicated. Some of them are really simple. Some of them are in very easy keys for a folk fiddler, and some of them are not. Um, but there's one which I kind of didn't really like because it was so annoyingly simple, but it's, gosh, it's lodged in my head now. I think for about two days I've been humming it. There's a Facebook group called um, Tuesday, no, Tuesday, Tuesday, I think it is, um, who learn a, a folk tune every week. And um, this week's was a um, Millie's Bequest, a, uh, a really simple Morris dance tune. Uh, same things happened on that one, actually, I sort of. Again, I found the tune a bit annoying and uh, underwhelming. Uh, but now it won't get out of my head, which is really annoying. So perhaps it wasn't such a bad tune after all. Nearly there.
Hmm. Mustn't rush this last bit. So what's the lesson from this little video then? I don't know really. Graham hasn't decided how to cut F holes yet. That's certainly one one thing I think we've all learnt. Um, I, I, one, I, one thing you probably won't have picked, on, picked up on is just um, what fun it is just whittling away here. And this really is, um, uh, yeah, it's slightly stressful because obviously you can potentially cock up quite a bit of work at this stage. But actually, the uh, just the joy of whittling away with a bit of a sharp knife and a bit of wood, you know, um, that's what we're doing here. And that's lovely. I like that. I suppose I'm I'm using some of the skills that I acquired when I was a little a little lad and uh, whittling away with a penknife and here I am still doing it basically pretty much the same thing. <laughs> Oh, thanks, love. I'll be in in a minute. Sounds like I've been summoned for tea. So that makes the uh, the decision about whether to put these flutes in now or not easier. Uh, I'm going to go and have my food instead. But let me just finish this.
Right. There we have it. I will come back and just touch these up a little bit just to just to get the shape finally right. Um, this bit here has to be just taken down a little bit so it's slightly concave and once the whole thing's glued up and everything then oh goodness gracious it's that fly again once the whole thing's glued up and I know the, the body stop length and everything then I'll put the little the little nicks in but for the moment that's the F holes um, yeah hope that was useful Oh dear, what a mess. <laughs> um, one hour and 14 minutes that was. Um, a lot of it just waffling. Um, but uh, fundamentally we started off with a, with a front which had no F holes and now we've got a front with F holes. So there we go. Hope you enjoyed it and talk to you all soon. Look after yourselves folks. Cheers, bye.